Roasted squash soup is one of those things that you find in a lot of restaurants, but it's so simple to make. Here we're gonna use acorn squash. You could easily substitute any type of squash. Um, I just think it's a squash that people don't realize they can cook with. It has less buzz, but it has a great orange deep flesh. It's as smooth as butternut squash, but it's not stringy like pumpkin. I've got one onion cooking here in this nice Dutch oven. It's chopped up with a little rough chop. We are gonna blend up the soup so it doesn't matter too much if it's nicely chopped. I'm just gonna add a little salt and pepper while that cooks. I've already pretty much cooked it into a nice soft and translucent texture. Um, of course the main ingredients in the soup is the acorn squash and we've got one here. We picked these up at the farmer's market yesterday and here's what it looks like when you cut it open. And I just scoop out the seeds um, you can save them to snack on if you roast them too. And uh, put them face down in a roasting pan with a little bit of oil and you roast it for about half an hour for something of this size. And uh, you get this nice caramelized squash puree. Um, we're gonna add this right away. And to make it more liquid, we're gonna add some veggie stock. About one cup of it. And get that all nice and mixed in there. I'll let that hang out for a little bit. Now, this is the easiest way to blend up a small portion of anything. It's an immersion blender. And you just get in there and zap it until it's a nice creamy pureed consistency. The idea here is just to get it smooth and creamy. But I think it's just about cooked through. I am gonna add a little bit of milk to this, so I think that once that's added, it will be the, just the perfect thickness that I wanna have my soup with. Okay, so my garnish for this soup is gonna be a little different. Um, instead of doing a crunchy, maybe fried onions or shallots or fried potato chips on top, I'm gonna make kale chips. You can use them, kale chips, for anything. You can snack on them. I, I just think it's a really healthy and very interesting way to enjoy kale. Um, we start out with um, some, of the, some of the fresh kale leaves that we got at the market yesterday. I'm gonna put them directly into a roasting pan. And the oven's preheating right now to very hot uh, temperature. I think 450 to 500 degrees should be just fine. This roasting pan can certainly take 500 degrees. Um, it's a great, you know, dual purpose. You can use it as a casserole dish. You can bake brownies in it. And here we're gonna toss some kale in there and make kale chips. So I'm gonna just drizzle this with a little olive oil. Not too much. Coat it um, very thinly with a little olive oil and some salt. I'm just gonna shake it up so it gets evenly distributed. And now you do wanna evenly space it so you don't want clumps on top of one another because what'll happen is the kale, each one will really fry up. And as they do, they'll concentrate and become these wonderful brown, crisp, light, crunchy topping. So I'm gonna stick that in the oven and actually, I already made a set, so here is our pre-made kale chips. And wow, this, is, this came out just perfect. Um, some of them are a little darker than others, but it's no problem. And they came out just as light as a dried leaf. Let's see how our soup is doing. Once you roasted the squash, it's really cooked and it has a lot of flavor, so you don't really need to cook it much longer. I think I'm gonna add some salt and pepper. Oh, a good pinch or two, because I am still gonna add some milk, so I wanna make sure that it stays pretty flavorful. Just a little pepper. Let's see how that does. Mmm. Oh, I think that's just about right. Um, last thing I want to add is a little bit of whole milk. You can also use half and half to make it richer, creamier. And once you 
make sure it's pretty warm, but you don't want to, you know, bring it to a boil after you add the milk. So once it's really warm through, which I think it is because this is already pretty warm to begin with, you can go ahead and plate. I'm going to get a bowl to serve this in. It's a really nice, silky acorn squash soup. I'm going to make a really full bowl. Okay. And now we're going to add our delightful crunchy topping. So instead of croutons, you get some color, nutrition. Kale is so good for you. I'm also going to add a little bit of a nutmeg. This is completely optional, but I think a shaved nutmeg on a squash soup is just a great accompaniment. And pine nuts. Pine nuts are not, you know, the cheapest ingredient to have in your cupboard, but I think they really add a richness and great little pop of texture to your finished dish. Last but not least, I wanted to drizzle on a little bit of that butternut squash seed oil. I'll add a pretty little sheen to the top. You can add as little as much as you want. I think that'll taste really great. If you have the sweetness from the acorn squash, the saltiness and the kale chips and the great crisp texture, and you have the nuttiness of the butternut squash seed oil as well as the pine nuts too. It's just a hearty as well as nutritious bowl of soup.